ever thought about going to Antarctica? It's this super cool place with no people living there full time, crazy weather, and gigantic icebergs that look like skyscrapers. Imagine exploring a frozen desert that's so epic, it's like stepping into the footsteps of those awesome explorers from way back. If you're dreaming of a super exciting and unforgettable adventure, a trip to Antarctica might be just what you need. But hold on, before you pack your bags, check out these videos on 15 mysterious things found in Antarctica that no one can explain. Trust me, you'll want to know what you're getting into. Number 15. Lost Soviet Cruiser Back in the 1950s, the Soviet Union, along with other countries, started digging into Antarctica. They sent tractors, but soon realized they needed something tougher. Enter the Kharkov Chanka, a beast of a vehicle over 13 feet high and nearly 28 feet long. It was like a mobile home on tank wheels, complete with a kitchen, bedroom, restroom, and even a workshop. Now, picture this. In 1975, they upgraded to the 2.0 version, and guess what? It's still cruising around Antarctica today. Talk about a durable explorer. But hold on, that's not all. Fast forward to today's cool topic, an unexpected discovery in Antarctica. Imagine finding a shipwreck not at the bottom of the sea, but raised from the freezing waters, trapped in ice like it's been cemented in place. Crazy, right? Antarctica's bone-chilling climate can freeze ships right in their tracks. Think about the famous ship Endurance, the one that carried explorer Ernest Shackleton in 1915. It got stuck in ice, crushed, and sank. Recently, it was found almost 10,000 feet below the surface, but here's the twist. The ship we're talking about today got lifted by an iceberg and is stuck in an ice cliff, like a snapshot in time. Number 14. Millions of Nests Recently, a super cool research icebreaker stumbled upon something mind-blowing. Deep down, about 1,600 feet below the icy Weddell Sea, they discovered the biggest fish nesting party ever seen. We're talking a whopping 92 square miles of the ocean floor. That's like one-third larger than Washington, D.C. Crazy, right? Now, here's the scoop. Usually, fish make nests. This time, it's like a fish neighborhood down there. Over 12,000 nests were caught on camera. And get this, experts think there are around 60 million nests in total. That's like a fish city under the sea. So, how did they find this underwater fiesta? The ship was cruising around the Antarctic Peninsula and their main continent, checking out what's happening on the ocean floor. They had this nifty device trailing behind, recording videos and using sound to map out the sea bottom features. Here's where it gets even cooler. Under the Weddell Sea's ice shelf, they spotted something peculiar, circular nests popping up on camera. Who were the builders? None other than the Jonah's Ice Fish, a special kind found only in the Southern Ocean and Antarctic waters. These fish are like the rock stars of the icy world with blood that's crystal clear and packed with antifreeze magic. Number 13. Statue in the Middle of Nowhere Alright, listen to this fascinating tale about a statue in the middle of nowhere. So, there's this place called the Pole of Inaccessibility in Antarctica, and it's got its name for a reason. It's like the farthest point on the continent, away from the surrounding seas. Back in 1958, a brave team of 18 Soviet explorers embarked on a wild journey, dragging tractor trailers loaded with gear and ready to assemble buildings. Once they reached this crazy remote spot, they went to work. They built a small station with a hut for four, a radio shack, two massive radio antenna towers, and some weather instruments. Oh, and they even put up a plastic bust of Lenin on top of the hut, pointing all the way to Moscow. But here's the twist. They soon realized this place was just too far out there for a permanent setup. So after just 12 days, they packed up and left. Guess what? An aircraft swooped in, landed on a makeshift airfield, and picked up four researchers. The rest of the crew patiently waited to be picked up by sled. Fast forward to 1967. The Russians made a final return to the site. But get this. The next visit didn't happen until 2007. That's 40 years later. This time, a British team made history by being the first to reach the pole of inaccessibility without any fancy mechanical help. Now, the station is kind of buried. The lonely Lenin bust is still there, and there's even a plaque commemorating the Soviet explorer's conquest of this challenging pole. And you know what? The whole site is now marked as a historic monument. Imagine the stories that lonely statue could tell. Number 12. Abandoned Whaling Station let me tell you a story about an old whaling station. Back in the day, British sailors played a big role in the whaling business down in the southern hemisphere. 
but now all that's left are rusty buildings and the skeletons of old ships. These places used to be bustling with activity, but now being alone there is not something you'd fancy. Just imagine this scene, chimneys made of rusty steel lying broken across the roads, power plants and dormitory blocks looking all smashed up and the inside spilling out through the walls. Beds, baths, pipes, wires, cushions, mattresses, all once part of a lively station, now just scattered in the freezing air. The oil tanks, those huge steel cylinders standing 30 feet high and 30 feet across, look like a giant hand squeezed them in. But it's not magic, it's just the result of time and the fierce winds of the Southern Ocean. After the place shut down in 1965, people have tried to fix it up. They want to make it safe for visitors, so they're cleaning up the mess left behind. Yet, even with all the effort, those mountain winds on this sub-Antarctic island won't give up. The whole place still creaks and groans. Imagine the sound. Rusty sheets screeching, doors slamming, and the giant processor plants ventilator cows turning in the wind, just like they did when the place was abandoned back in 1965. It's like nature itself is telling the story of what once was a busy whaling station. Number 11. Haunted Huts Back in 1899, 10 adventurous souls set out on an expedition to Antarctica. Now, these weren't just any explorers. They were the brave bunch who spent an entire Antarctic winter in huts. These huts were like puzzle pieces put together from prefabricated parts. Inside these snug structures, the men not only lived, but also worked. Imagine this, a dark room and a taxidermy studio were part of the setup. Their mission? To document everything about the icy continent. Here's the kicker. In these huts, the only personal space the men had was their own bunk. And because the huts weren't exactly mansions, they ended up spending most of the winter stuck in their bunks. It was like a cozy, frozen sleepover that lasted for months. Now, jump ahead a few decades. These huts, along with others, were mostly buried under layers of snow and ice. Strangely enough, this icy covering acted like a time capsule, preserving the huts way longer than anyone expected. Spooky, right? Could they be haunted? Well, only the restoration experts know for sure. Speaking of restoration, a bunch of skilled folks decided to give these historic huts a facelift. They had to deal with snow and ice that weighed them down, and the relentless winds of Antarctica. A team of 62 specialists from 12 countries, each a pro in paper, timber, textile, and metal conservation, joined forces. It was like a superhero squad for history. These huts are part of a trio on Ross Island, Cape Royds Base, Cape Evans, and Hut Point. Looking into the future, there's a dedicated team making sure these huts stay in tip-top shape. They're committed to keeping the historic sites alive, ensuring that these Antarctic time capsules remain a window into the past. Number 10. Ghost Yacht there was this yacht called the Ghost Yacht, also known as the Endless Sea. It belonged to a famous Brazilian journalist and entrepreneur. The boat met its fate in Maxwell Bay of Ardley Cove, Antarctica, about 750 miles south of the tip of South America. It got its spooky nickname because of what happened next. So here's the story. The yacht had four people on board, and they were busy shooting a documentary off the Antarctic coast. But then, a super strong wind, over 60 miles an hour, started pushing the boat against the ice. Uh-oh. The crew sent out a radio mayday, and luckily, the Chilean Navy stationed in the frozen land received it. When the Navy's boat finally reached the scene, the filmmakers hopped on board and made a quick escape. Good news for the people, but not so much for the boat. You see, the icy water got inside the yacht's hull and then froze. This freezing made the yacht expand and sink, ending up at the bottom of the bay, which was just 20 feet deep. Fast forward to the rescue mission. The owner, determined to bring the ghost yacht back, waited for the right weather conditions. When it was safe, they inflated boots gradually, lifting the yacht that had been chilling underwater for almost a whole year. And just like that, the ghost yacht was saved. Quite a tale, huh? Number 9. Arctic Military Base Check this out. There's a brand new military base up in the Arctic. It's made to house about 150 soldiers and is all about making Russia's military fleet super independent. The big shots call it an effort to make Moscow's presence stronger in the Arctic, and they're saying mission accomplished. Now, this base is no ordinary spot. It's got a super cool radar station that's like the latest and greatest, according to the Russians. This radar keeps a close eye on what ships and planes are up to. Plus, Russia made the runway at this base way longer a whopping 11,000 feet. That means it can handle landing and refueling most of its military planes, including those speedy jet fighters that patrol the polar skies. You know what's making all this happen? 
the Arctic sea ice melting, thanks to climate change. It's making the Arctic seas easier to reach, which is perfect for shipping and hunting for energy and minerals. The base, known as the Arctic trefoil, was finished up in 2017. It's just a skip and a hop, about 160 miles east of the easternmost part of Norway's Svalbard archipelago. And get this, the base is like a super chilly superhero. It's built on stilts to brave the extreme cold up there. But it's not just about being tough. This base is totally self-sufficient in electricity. Plus, it's got cool extras like a clinic, library, chapel, gym, and even a cinema. Now, that's one high-tech, cold-resistant hangout. Number 8. Glacier Tongue Let me tell you about something cool. The Erebus Glacier in Antarctica. It comes down from Mount Erebus and sticks out from Ross Island, making a six-mile-long ice tongue. Now, an ice tongue is like a super long and narrow sheet of ice that juts out from the coastline. Imagine this. The Erebus ice tongue looks like a serrated blue-edged knife cutting into the snowy and icy McMurdo Sound. It's like a frozen adventure waiting to happen. This icy wonderland changes in thickness, ranging from 160 feet at the front to a hefty 980 feet where it's connected to the shoreline. Now, here's the science part. Ice tongues happen when glacier ice flows fast into the sea, usually in a sheltered area. In this case, Capes, Evans, and Royds from Ross Island protect the Erebus ice tongue from the open waters of the Ross Sea. It's like a natural ice shield. When summer arrives and the sea ice in McMurdo Sound melts, the ice tongue floats on the water without thawing. But here's the interesting twist. When the ice around the tongue melts in the summer, waves of seawater constantly crash against the edges, creating super cool shapes like deep caves. It's like nature's ice sculpting show. And when winter rolls back around, the sea freezes again, keeping these new icy shapes intact. So, the Erebus ice tongue is like a year-round ice masterpiece, shaped by changing seasons and the dance between ice and see. How cool is that? Number 7. Strange Footprint Phenomenon Ever heard of a mysterious thing called the Strange Footprint Phenomenon? Picture this. Tiny icy footprints popping up from the snow like little frozen flowers. Well, it's not magic. It's a real deal, known as raised footprints. Here's the scoop. This happens in places that go through weeks of super chilly, dry, and windy weather. Imagine these footprints growing up from the snow, as if they have a destination in mind. But here's the twist. By the time you spot these footprints, there's not much you can do for the person who made them. It takes weeks for these footprints to form, because it needs more than just a strong wind to blow away the snow. Now, why do we care about these footprints? Well, they often signal potential avalanche danger. It's like a natural warning sign. This footprint magic happens in a very particular setting. The weather has to be dry, and the wind has to be relentless. As someone walks, their feet press down on the snow, making it super hard compared to the snow around it. Here's the trick. The snow has to be loose and dry, so the foot can sink in and squeeze the snow until it's rock hard. As the wind sweeps over the area, it carries away the loose snow particles, but the compressed snow from the footprints sticks around. So you can actually follow someone's trail by their footprints for weeks after they've made them. It's like nature's way of leaving behind frozen breadcrumbs. Number 6. Towing Icebergs Imagine this. A rich person with a big idea wanted to tow an iceberg from Antarctica all the way to the Arabian Gulf. Believe it or not, there are companies that make fancy equipment just for this kind of thing. They call it ice management operations. So, towing icebergs is a real deal. Now, the wealthy visionary thought that having a giant chunk of ice floating along the coast of the United Arab Emirates could give the country a new source of fresh, drinkable water. In theory, it sounds like a fantastic plan. The person's dream was to bring an iceberg from Antarctica to the UAE's Fujaira coast. The journey, expected to last about 10 months, would use satellite technology to pick the right iceberg, maybe one that's a whole mile wide. And get this, they'd use a special metal belt to stop the iceberg from breaking apart during the long trip. But here's the catch. Along the way, this huge block of ice could lose up to 30% of its size before it reaches the warm waters of the Arabian Gulf. If everything goes according to plan and the tests work out, we might see an iceberg floating toward the Gulf Coast. But here's the chilly part. The whole journey would cost a whopping $200 million, as per the early estimates. That's a whole lot of cash for a frosty adventure. Number 5. Crack in the Ice Check this out. There's this giant iceberg that's about 490 square miles big and almost 500 feet thick. It's way more massive than Manhattan. 
more than 20 times bigger. And get this, this huge piece of ice decided to break off from Antarctica. Yep, it said goodbye to the Brunt Ice Shelf. Now here's the thing, it didn't happen suddenly. Scientists had noticed big cracks in the ice almost 10 years ago. Some folks might point fingers at climate change, but scientists are saying, hold up, these cracks might just be a natural thing. Imagine it like a big step in the life of an ice shelf. It grows and grows until it becomes too heavy, then it breaks off. It's like a cycle for ice shelves. The Brunt Ice Shelf usually sheds icebergs, but this time was different. Experts hadn't seen something like this since 1971. There were signs, you know. A crack appeared called the North Rift, and it started moving towards another big crack about 21 miles away. This crack crept along at about half a mile each day before suddenly getting much wider. And guess what? In just a few hours, the iceberg cut itself free, like a big icy event happening in the blink of an eye. Nature is full of surprises, isn't it? Number 4. Rectangle Iceberg Check this out. Scientists working with a NASA mission checking on how polar regions deal with climate change caught some cool footage. They found icebergs that look like giant rectangles. Who would have thought ice could be so square? Right? Now, when people saw these flat, square, super smooth icebergs in the footage, it set the internet on fire. People started chatting about aliens and scientists with chainsaws. But guess what? These rectangular icebergs are completely natural. The scientists spotted them near northern Antarctica during a survey of the polar ice. The biggest one they saw was about a mile across. But here's the thing. Only about 10% of it pokes out above the water. So, most of this square-shaped iceberg is hiding underwater like an iceberg ninja. In fact, icebergs breaking off from the edges of ice shells are like the corners of a piece of paper getting snipped with ocean scissors. Right when they break off, the edges are all square and neat. These flat, sharp, cornered ice shapes are usually wider than they are deep and can stretch for hundreds of miles. But as these flat ice giants float away, any sharp corners get smoothed out in collisions with other icebergs or slowly melt away. Nature's like its own ice sculptor, right? Number 3. Creepy Ice Holes let me tell you about something cool. It's called cryokonite. The name comes from cryo, meaning ice, and konite, meaning dust. These mysterious ice holes were first discovered by a Swedish explorer back in 1870 when he was tracking on Greenland's ice cap. So, cryokonite is like these funky holes filled with water on the surface of glaciers. At the bottom of these holes, you usually find dark-colored stuff like sediments. The rest of the hole is filled with meltwater. Now, here's the interesting part. Cryokonite dust is made up of tiny rock bits, dirt, and even tiny living things like microbes. This mix gets deposited on snow, glaciers, or ice caps. But here's the twist. Cryokonite can also have dust from faraway deserts, bits from volcanic eruptions, particles from power plants. These dark materials soak up sunlight, getting warm and causing the ice below to melt. This creates long cylindrical holes. As the cryokonite sinks, it forms a black layer at the bottom and keeps melting deep into the ice. In the summer, these holes often have water, making a cozy home for small creatures like cold-loving microorganisms and tiny animals. It's like a little oasis in the icy world. Cool, huh? Number 2. Icy Fingers we're probably not going to be scuba diving near Antarctica anytime soon, but if you ever find yourself there, watch out for something strange called a brinicle. It's like an icicle hanging from your house's roof, but way bigger. We're talking feet instead of inches, and guess what? It's not made from rainwater. It's made from super salty seawater called brine. This odd thing is known as the icy finger of death. Here's the scoop. When seawater on the ocean surface turns into ice, it releases salt. This salt makes the nearby water super salty and stops it from freezing, even though it's freezing cold. Then, it starts sinking toward the ocean floor in a swirling vortex. Sounds pretty dramatic, right? This rare natural event freezes and takes down everything in its path once it hits the seabed. As it grows, it traps all sorts of creatures living at the bottom. They end up frozen in ice. Sometimes icy pools of super cold brine form where the barnacle touches the seafloor. They're like black pools of danger. So, if you ever spot this icy finger, keep your distance. It's a frosty force to be reckoned with. Number 1. Alien Meteorite Listen to this fascinating story. Scientists discovered something intriguing in a meteorite believed to be from Mars. It was found in 1984 by folks riding snowmobiles in Antarctica's Allen Hills region. Since then, it became one of the most studied rocks ever. It got scientists excited about astrobiology. 
and got NASA pumped up about Mars. So, this space rock is thought to have formed on Mars about 4 billion years ago and landed on Earth roughly 13,000 years ago. Now, here's the cool part. Scientists found tiny magnetite particles in it, similar to those made by microorganisms. At first, they thought, whoa, could this be evidence of super ancient Martian life? It would have been a game changer for how we think about life in the universe. But unfortunately, the majority of scientists said, hold on, not so fast. They couldn't conclusively prove that the meteorite contained evidence of life on Mars. Even though it didn't confirm life on the red planet, the research was still a win for science. Alrighty folks, that's a wrap for this video. We hope you find it informative and enjoyable. So, do you ever want to visit Antarctica? Share in the comments below. Moreover, if you appreciate our content and wish to stay updated on our latest releases, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell. Your support means the world to us. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.